Hi, Whitney. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. And I'm so grateful to just be a part of your business launch and journey. Oh, I am honored to have you as my first guest. You know, you are not only an amazing soul, but you're my friend and you are someone who completely inspires me and you're helping people with every part of their life. And that's why you're on here. You know, Thank you. I started this podcast so that I could share other people's journeys, other people's stories so we can all help each other. Yeah, absolutely. So I wanted to introduce you to anyone who doesn't know you, which I'm sure there's just a few, even though you've gotten so much bigger since I've met you. Um, Whitney Aronoff is a holistic chef based in Laguna Beach, California. Uh, she is the founder of Starseed Kitchen, a health and wellness website that shares high vibration recipes and sells organic spice blends that not only enrich the flavors of your meals, but provide healing for your body and soul. Chef Whitney is also the founder of the High Vibration Podcast, I'm sorry, High Vibration Living Podcast, where she discusses many ways to elevate your eating habits, as well as ways to align all the layers of you through your physical, emotional, spiritual, and mental body. She is my friend, a wonderful entrepreneur, an amazing soul, and I'm blessed to know her. Thank Aww. you. So one of the reasons why I wanted to bring you on here as my first guest is because I can't believe in the year 2023, we still have people who are eating processed foods, drinking soda, you know, um, I, 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 the obesity crisis is the biggest it's ever been. What is going on? What? Why are people doing this? And why is it that nobody understands when you say, I'm eating high vibration foods, or I want to raise my vibration? I want you to tap into that. And I want to start with eating because really that is what we need to survive. Yeah, absolutely. I find it fascinating too. So I was born in 1981. You know, I grew up with getting my nutrition information from magazines, right? That was very much where we sourced our information on how to be healthy, how to look beautiful, how to feel good was magazines. And, you know, there was no information in there letting you know to not eat processed foods. It was more focusing you on diet foods and low fat I just intuitively stopped drinking soda in middle school. I would go out to a restaurant with family or friends. They'd ask what I want to drink. They'd always ask if I want a soda. I just started saying no and just started just drinking water. And that was a gut instinct of mine. No one told me. I think a lot of people can't feel their intuition. They, they don't know how to tap into it easily. When that feeling comes up, it feels uncomfortable for them. And eating processed foods numbs that. So the more fast food, the more processed sugars, the more food you eat, where if you were to look at the ingredients list, it's a mile long because it's not fresh, right? So there's a big difference between, you know, eating a steak and eating beyond meat, right? One is you know, a real food. The other has a bunch of ingredients is in made in a factory. So obviously one would be more health supportive than the other, um, no matter how you look at it. So the more we eat processed foods, the more it just numbs our ability to hear ourselves, hear our gut instincts, hear our mind, understand how our body's reacting. You know, so if you watch little kids, they'll see food and they're intuitively feeling it too, and they'll go into it or they'll go away from it. And we don't know why, but they're just more in tune with what's right for them. Animals are the same way. You know, one week your your dog will eat the chicken, the next week the dog won't eat the chicken, and you don't know why. Could, something could be different about that chicken. Um, I just think a lot of people have lost or are too disconnected from their internal mechanism. And so that's what I'm helping, trying to help people tap back into um, the ability to realize and sense 
what's real and what's fake, what's right for them, what's not right for them. Um, the fact that people are continuing to choose processed foods that are out there are, is baffling to me too. Um, and I really just think people just don't know. I think people really just trust that if it's sold, it's good for them. Yeah, that kind of goes back to people uh, watching whatever Netflix throws out at them rather than being discretionary, like, hmm, maybe if I watch this, this isn't good for me, you know, but because it's yeah. on TV, it's okay. You know, I'm sure it's user kid friendly. It's they have filtered it, you know, yeah. they have. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you a great example. I remember when Squid Games came out on Netflix, people were talking, I was hearing people say, oh my God, it's absolutely horrifying. Absolutely horrifying. You can't even believe. And I was like, no, I, I don't need to believe, don't need to hear any more about it. And I will never watch that. I'm not allowing that into my internal environment. That's not going to help my nervous system. It's not going to help my gut. It's not going to create anything for my brain. You know, people are telling me it's giving them nightmares. Oh, I don't want nightmares. Um, but oftentimes people hear, oh my God, it's so awful, you know, and people then go and watch it. Um, but what we consume with our eyes is food too. You, we all have had experiences where we've gone to a movie and we haven't been able to get it out of our head. You know, we've all had experiences where we watched media and we can't stop thinking about it. So when you hear something from somebody about a TV show or media and it's not good, choose not to participate it. Build that muscle. If you can build that muscle to when you hear something's not good and then not participating in it, you'll be able to build that muscle for other instances. So I just got back from a Joe Dispenza conference, seven days of meditation, seven days of learning about how our brain works, how our heart works, how our chakras work, our energy field, our Taurus feel, all of that is real science. All of that's being studied just down the coast at UC San Diego. It's really beautiful and amazing. And he's talking about the same thing. You know, everything that's out there is consumption stays in the brain, stays in the body. And people are wondering why they aren't healthy. You're consuming a lot and it's staying inside, you know? So you have to be mindful about what you take in. And what I experienced when I was at the conference, like very rarely participating in social media, not watching any television and meditating every day, I felt so good being in control of my internal zone. Why change that? There's so much to experience in life without all the additional noise. It made it so much easier for me to hear what I wanted, what I needed, where I want to expand and grow with less vocal noise out there, which supports in you better being able to understand what you need feel-wise, what foods you want to eat. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that because it's like, it goes back to the whole concept of how you do anything is how you do everything. Love that. Yep. That is my, that's my motto. And every time I'm not doing everything right, I'm like, okay, what do I got to change to be doing everything the way I should be doing in, in my mind, I guess. Right. Yeah. But, um, so if you're eating bad foods, then chances are you are thinking bad thoughts. Chances are you're then having bad behavior patterns. Chances are you may have a bad relationship with not only your partner, spouse, maybe your friendships. Chances are you may be having bad relationships at work. Would you agree that that is kind of how it goes? Yes, and I just was at a conference where for seven days they showed the science that that is true. They proved the science from scientists from all over the world. We even had a scientist from, from Austria who he had proven that if you think bad thoughts, bad things will happen to you. 
And then he was like, why am I doing this? Why have I spent years proving the negative? Why am I not spending my life proving how if we think positive thoughts, how we think ourselves beautiful, healthy, wealthy, divine, that we can create a better outcome for, for us, that we can cure ourselves of whatever is ailing us, that we can create optimal health and wisdom and an incredible life through our positive thoughts. So now that's what that that um, scientist is studying now. But it's 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 absolutely true. And you know, you and I are a little bit different. Like we are really into health, wellness, spirituality. You know, but I talk to people who aren't into this. So I have a personal chef client who is at the top of his game in business. He works in the finance industry. He is one of the best in his category in the US, let alone the world. I mean, this is he 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 plays to win. And he told me he's never meditated a day in his life. He's never meditated a day in his life. Loved hearing about my experience at the conference. And what I was sharing with him, he said, you know, this is what you're sharing is what I've been doing my whole life. This is why I am where I am. He's like, because I'm in control. He's like, every day that I wake up in the morning, I say to myself, something great is going to happen to me today, and I'm going to make something great happen. He said he's been saying that to himself since he's been in high school. And if you knew where this man lives, what he does for a living, the life he lives, it's incredible. And that's been his mindset for, you know, 35, 40 years, and he found that on his own. So I think there's a lot of ways for us to all get to the same place. You don't need to go, and Dr. Joe Dispenza talked a lot about this too, you don't need to go and live in a cave. Mm-hmm. You don't need to run away from Thank your God. life. Yeah, yeah. He's actually encouraging people not to do that. You know, mm-hmm. the challenge is exactly what you said, is being the person you want to be every day, showing up in every present moment as that idealized version of you. So what he talked a lot about and reminded us about why he does, Dr. Joe Dispenza, why he's doing what he's doing is he found himself sitting in a chair meditating in the morning and then he'd go to work and, you know, he'd scream at the car that caught him off in front of him. He'd get to the office and he'd get annoyed with someone that was working with him who he didn't feel like, you know, was doing the job right. You know, he was allowing, you know, different things in his environment to piss him off, to throw him off, to make him act in a way that wasn't his, the authentic self he really wanted to be showing up as every day. And that's when he realized, all right, the true practice is not the meditation in the chair. The true practice is taking that off and out of the chair and into your life. And when you can master that, you've mastered life. And then you can really start to play with attracting in anything you want, any experience you want, optimal health and wellness, abundance, love, you know, creating whatever you want when you can carry yourself everywhere you go in that idealized form of yourself. So would you say that, because my whole concept, I'm, st- I'm starting this podcast, is because I am also trying to figure out how to play that game. You are playing that game. And could we agree that it's a game? Is it? Yes. This is a a full on game. And I, you know, I was actually sitting on the floor last night, getting ready for bed, thinking about this podcast, thinking about what I was going to wear, how I wanted to show up. And again, dreaming about my dream life dreaming about where I really want to be living, what that house looks like, what my husband looks like, that that idealized life. And then it hit me again. What I had just learned a week or two ago, what I've been learning for years is I have to stop thinking about that future life I'm living right now. Show up every day as that woman. Show up every day as the person that has that life. And then the time it takes for me to get there will come together faster. But I can't wait 
until that time to be that person. You have to be it now. And that's exactly what you're doing by taking the steps to launch and create this podcast is you're being that person now. Exactly. Like there's no time to wait because that perfect moment with that dream house, that dream man or whatever your, your ambitions, goals are, it will not come. And even if it does come, you may not be happy with it at the time. Yeah. Something also could be wrong at that time. And you're like, oh, God, I wish for those better days when maybe I didn't have a health problem or something. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like yeah. God has a sense of humor, right? And, and, and we just waste our life wanting something that it seems so hard to achieve. And we unfortunately compare ourselves to other people. I mean, we all suffer from that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, how did they do it? You know, but we really also don't know what's going on in their lives. Yeah. We do not see what's happening behind closed doors. So a big line that I know you've heard before is fake it till you make it, you know, and that was something, you know, you used to always hear in like the late nineties, early two thousands, just fake it till you make it. And we need to take that line and kind of flip it because you don't want to fake it. You can't fake it. If you're going to make it, you just need to be it now. Just be it now. I love that. It is so true. And they need to teach that in school. Yeah. So what I mean, the, parents yeah. need to teach that to their children actually. Yeah. And so one of the things I'm trying to do right now is like, all right, if I, I have this vision of me that I want to step into being, how do I be it now? So I look around, around at my home, my environment, my businesses, how I'm currently living and I'm, I'm editing. It's time to clear clutter, like physical clutter. I got to clear that clutter in order to be that woman. I need to go through the closet. I need to clear that clutter. So it's easy for me to put on the uniform that is that woman. You know, I need to look at my daily habits, how I structure my day. Is it structured the way I really want to be living? Am I doing the activities that are going to make me feel good, that are going to nourish my body, mind, and soul? What are the new things I can start making for dinner or for lunch that are going to help me move into that person that's going to help me just let go of in my body what no longer serves me as we transition seasons from spring to fall or summer to fall, but also as I transition in life, you know? I need to let go of some things. Um, so, I mean, this is such a great time of year to make changes because the environment's making changes. It's a lot easier to make changes when you're seeing it happen all around you. That's a really good point. It's almost like you're planting the seeds for spring and you're getting the conditions right. Yeah. So I have you know, a, like, you're, you know, you're, you're, you know, fixing your soil, so to speak. I don't, I'm not a gardener, so I don't know the, <laughs> the right verbiage. Exactly. I'm not a garden, gardener either, but there's a few little things that I know. And that is always that you are preparing for your harvest almost six months in advance. So they plant the strawberries in December for the summer. I mean, that's amazing. Like yeah. it takes a long time to harvest. So one of, um, a spiritual practitioner who I love and adore, Shakti Sita, who I've had on my podcast. She's a Kundalini yoga teacher who's based in Sedona, Arizona. And she does retreats on equinoxes because it takes about six months for things to come to fruition. So you make a plan, you set your goals at the autumn equinox, and you'll watch them blossom come spring. You know, I guess that's following the laws of nature. I think that's the problem is that, or the challenge that we uh, put on ourselves is that we're not aligned with the, the laws of nature. We want to bypass them or not even recognize them. We want to create our own laws and rules, but it yes. seems like the universe has its own way of working, right? Why aren't we aligned with that? I completely agree with you. And if you, if you, you know, the information's out there, you can look at the traditions of every season of every month. And, you know, there's a time to harvest and there's a time to rest. There's a time to put all your energy into it. And there's a time to, you know, put on the brakes 
and go inward and allow whatever you put out there to naturally blossom. But it's time for you, you know, to personally rest and digest so you can create in the next cycle. Um, so th this information's all out there. It's really beautiful. I was really into it when I went to culinary school at the Natural Gourmet Institute because it's, a, it's very much um, an Eastern philosophy where you can look up every month and see what we're supposed to do in that month. Um, but that's a lot of the astrological chart um, or the natal chart. Each, each sign um, is really a representation, a representation of the season, the energy of that month. And that's very much an energy that you can bring to your life, whether you're born in that month or not. Oh, that, okay, that makes sense. So if, um, okay, if I'm a Sagittarius, what what would I be bringing? Educate I, me. I would have to go back and listen to the podcast oh. episode I did on that. So I did a podcast episode on that with um, an astrologer named Miara Rose. Um, she is from Awakened Aspects. And we went around the entire astrological chart to talk about the energy of that season, as well as the foods that most nourish that sign, which also happen to be the foods that are usually in season during that time. It's also connected to a body part and an organ. Um, so it's, it's very interesting. All the information's out there. Our just time is spent studying other stuff when we're growing up and instead of these basic life skills. I agree with you. The information, you know what, the information is not only out there, it's within us. We I have agree. forgotten yeah. all of this information. Yeah. And that's why when we're, we're in the game, let's say, okay, so we agree that we're in this game. Yes. Which I, the, the word matrix is overused, mm -hmm. but it really, really, um, it really explains in a short word what it is. It's a matrix where you cannot see a clear path to get out. It's almost like a maze of some sort. The path is right here and right here. So the path is in your heart and your brain and your pineal gland. And I mean, literally, I just, I mean, you would go bananas at the Dr. Joe Dispenza conference because it is so much more than anything that he can share online. And it literally, he doesn't like using the word matrix either, but we all know we're in a game. But the great thing is we're player one, like we control the game. And it's being able to connect your heart and your mind so they're working together. So your heart is the, the heart is the magnetic field. The brain is the energetic field. When the two work together, we're able to attract what we want. Things can come to us faster. Matter is the slowest form of energy. The matter that we can see, it's the slowest form of vibrational energy on the planet. It's so slow, it's creating products. You know, it's the stuff that we can see in front of us because vibrationally the frequency is slowed down enough for us to see it, hold it, touch it, feel it. The faster the energy, the higher the vibration, the harder it is for us to actually see it. You know, think about light. Light is moving a lot faster than matter. So the higher we raise our frequency, the more we connect the two energy fields of our body the more we can just start to attract what we want instead of m moving matter to get there. Okay, let's expand on that because I think a lot of people, what you said, I completely understand. But sometimes it's hard to explain that in a way that somebody who may not have studied this or may not know anything about Dr. Joe Dispenza or any other person talking yes. about this. Yes, he's not, like, he's not teaching anything new. Mm -hmm. He's teaching history. So when you talk, let's talk about vibration and frequency because mm -hmm. this goes back to eating. Mm -hmm. First of all, what is vibration? So everything is vibration. 
everything carries an energy. If it is on this planet, if we can feel it, see it, touch it, imagine it, it is a vibrational frequency. You know, we have a vibrational frequency first with our mom and dad, right? We innately know, trust, love, connect to them. You know, that's a great way to think about a vibrational frequency. If you are a mother or father and you get that feeling that something might be wrong with your child, that's a vibrational frequency that's being sent to you. You know, that's actually stem cells of theirs that are still in you. Um, so they're like communicating through a wave of some sort? Yeah. It's so like every, how, how does this happen? Everything is a vibrational frequency, a wave, and the waves look completely different considering how fast the frequency is moving. But everything is an energy field. And you control your energy field in a variety of different ways. You know, we have one is what's called the Taurus field around us. The Taurus field, people often think of as your auroric field, your energy field. It's that bubble that's six feet around you. Mm -hmm. That's the energy field. So a lot of the, you know, keep six feet apart, you know, keep apart, not allowing our energetic fields to connect so we can't connect with each other. Um, and then within our field, we have our energy centers, our chakras that also keep the energy flowing within us, connecting us to the earth, connecting us to all the different planes, the ones that we can see and that we cannot see. But, you know, when you go to the grocery store, when you go to the farmer's market and you go to pick up a piece of fruit, you know, a lot of people will pick up a few different apples or avocados until they choose the one, you know, and, and you know, people say, you know, oh no, I'm choosing for firmness, for softness, for this and that. But there's an energy field you are sensing, whether you realize it or not. And that also helps you choose your food because everything is just an energy. Everything's a choice and you're feeling into it, whether you realize it or not. So that's 101. If you love the science behind it, you can find a lot of people online that have the machines that can measure the frequency of everything. You can measure the frequency of all different types of stuff, of plants, of food. You can check the frequency of people that are alive. You can check the frequency of people that are dead. I mean, everything carries a frequency. It's absolutely fascinating. There's tons of machines that are out there on it. Um, because I already believe and know that everything's a frequency, you know, diving into the numbers and how to measure isn't my, isn't my wheelhouse just because I already know. But for someone like my um, future husband, let's say, yes. when I say what we have to do is raise our frequency. Yes. You have to wear clothes that raise your frequency, have an environment that ra raises your frequency. What does that mean when I'm saying that? And I know you know that what I'm talking about, but for the person who doesn't or is kind of confused, like let's say you're in your home. Okay, you're feeling like crap. What do you do to raise your frequency? Well, first, I did it this morning. Um, I cleaned and cleared my space. So I grabbed some sage. I burned some sage around me. I opened all the windows and doors in the house. I burned sage around every little corner of the house. And I said, guides and angels, clean and clear the space of all negative energy and psychic debris in this dimension and all dimensions. Simply because I could feel that there was stagnant energy. So everything emits energy like we're talking about. So my laptop's emitting energy, the lights behind it, it's emitting energy, or you could say electromagnetic frequency and EMF. The refrigerator, the oven, the stove, the toaster, you know, um, anything that's plugged in has an EMF frequency and you can measure that. You can order the EMF frequency off Amazon, a cheap one. My brother did last time he was here and he like, you know, flipped out over the toaster, unplugged the toaster, EMFs drop. Um, anything plugged in is giving off a frequency 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And so how do we get that built up magnetic frequency in different parts of the rooms? How do we clear that out? Cause it's going to affect 
our energy field that we talked about. So we open doors, we open windows, we get the breeze to go through, um, and then sage, palo santo, all those herbs help break up that EMF and move it out of the space. Intentions always everything as well. You know, with everything that we do, even meditations, intentions help the game. Intentions mm -hmm. move the game into the space we want to go because the game is played here. And the game is played here, right? So even with the most minute little tasks, the intention behind it is part of navigating within this maze. So to raise our frequency, first we need to make sure that we're starting with a better playing field. So we clean and clear our space. And by doing that, we clean and clear our energetic field. And then we can work on building it back up. So one of the one of the easiest ways to build it up is through food, right? So if you take Definitely. food that's a higher frequency and consume it, that's going to raise you up higher so you can better attract people at a higher frequency, experiences at a higher frequency, life at a higher frequency where things are just with more flow, grace, ease, joy. Things at a lower frequency tend to be more negative. So if we're eating processed foods and foods that are at a lower frequency, we're going to be at a lower frequency. We're going to be down here having lower level experiences, connecting with those like-minded people, those people that are just moving unconsciously through the world, you know, that are more reactive than proactive. Ah, yes, I love that analogy. Um, so let's say the person is going to a grocery store and they're like, okay, I want to eat high vibrational foods. Okay, what do they do? What do they like? Because some people are still uneducated about like, um, or the term organic, you know, the term low fat, the term healthy, when something says healthy, um, how would you advise them? Sure. So first, how do you feel when you walk into your grocery store? Like, do you like that grocery store? How do you feel when you walk in? Because that grocery store has a frequency, right? It has a program. It has an agenda. So you need to make sure that you're going to the right store for you. You should be feeling amazing when you walk in. You should be excited to be at that store because it's your favorite store. You've checked out all the ones in your neighborhood. Like, no, like you, nobody is stuck going to one place. There are options no matter where you are. You know, you can find one that lights you up that's gonna fulfill your needs. Then when we walk in and we start looking for our food, you know, you always have to watch, walk the outside of the grocery store. That's where the most fresh, higher quality ingredients are. Not in the middle where food sits on the shelves forever and a day. But when we choose our food products, it's not about what's on the front of the label, it's about what's on the back of the label. So it doesn't really matter what it's telling you to get your attention. What matters is the ingredients list. What matters is who owns the product? How did it get there? Why do you want it? What are you using it for? Is it in a can? Is it in a plastic container? Is it in a box? Is it in glass? Um, all depends on the product. Do, do, do you really need it in a can? You know, like, so it's a layered question. Um, I'm sure. You know, but, um, but the front of the label is never as important as the back of the label. Yeah, I try to tell everyone, I mean, I'm not an expert as, as you are, but I've been eating healthy ever since I was a little girl. Yes. Healthy meaning foods that are primarily raw from the earth and as a young girl like you mentioned you were kind of um, intuitive on what to eat well that was my case as well I always knew that it seemed that anything that grew from the ground was happy it had green leaves it had beautiful flowers that seemed like something I would want to consume something dead or in a box wasn't I just wasn't attracted to it so I had that inclination yes of what I should eat however things are very misleading mm -hmm. so I got when I got into high school and everything and I was trying to you know be Kate Moss and uh, be super skinny when none of us were like that <laughs> um, you know I got to eat fat free 
Yeah. You know, I have to watch my calories. I have to eat low caloric food, um, things like that. So I learned to look at the ingredients in the back and realize that if it has more than five ingredients, five was kind of like the magical number for me. Yeah. Some things like a full seeded cracker may have more ingredients than that. But can you kind of elaborate on that? Yeah. Do you have better advice for somebody? Yeah, less than 10 is what I usually go with. Um, less than 10, depending on, you know, what the product is, right? So if I'm picking up tomatoes, it should be tomatoes, you know? <laughs> if I'm picking up garbanzo beans, it should be garbanzo beans. We don't need any. 100% garbanzo beans. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, you know, when I, when I purchase those things these days, I want them in glass and you can find them all in glass. You can find your, your cooked beans in glass. You can find, you know, your stewed tomatoes, your plum tomatoes, all of that in glass. It is out there if you want it. So you can avoid that aluminum. Um, but I was like you, you know, we got our information from magazines and, and news stories on the today show, which told us low fat, non-fat, this, that the, the joke of it all, especially when it comes to dairy is Dairy isn't fat free. It's impossible. Dairy is fat. Dairy is the fat from a cow. Dairy is the fat from the goat. Um, for it to be fat free is a lie. So you want to eat the whole fat because it's satiating. It's brain food. It's good for the body. It's good for the skin. Um, you know, anytime you cut a natural ingredient from a product, now you're having a partial food. And when you have a partial food, your body knows something's missing and that's when you keep craving and you can't be satisfied. So a good example would be the egg white craze and everyone thinking they have to have egg whites and you're throwing out the yolks. Well, the yolk is the brain food. The yolk is the fat. You know, you need to eat the whole egg together to be satiated. You could eat one egg and be satisfied as an afternoon snack but you could have four egg whites and still be hungry because you've had a partial food. Your body know like where's the where is the whole thing? Um, that's yeah. a that's very very um, that's very key what you just said whole. So the whole idea about this podcast and I think that people in general are trying to find is coming back to themselves to become yeah. a whole being. We're trying to play the game to come back to what was once whole and we're all, f you know, we're fractal. I don't know what, we're just mm -hmm. all over the place, right? Ex exactly. You got to bring it back in. Bring so it back in. The, yeah. And, to, and like God, the universe, a higher source, whatever you want to call it, has already done the hard work for us. It already made the egg in a perfect shape we could never recreate it ourselves no so we have to but it exists back. i well i let's just yeah <laughs> we'll do another podcast on like gmos and fake food and all of that but if we could just remember a simple formula is it whole has it been broken down like you said into a half or what partialized you know, yeah partialized because if we eat something that's partialized chances are then we're going to also continue to be partial instead yeah. of being whole. Could you, could you see it like that? No, oh, absolutely. Something's missing. Like the, the piece of the puzzle is missing. I always try to tell people if you're, you know, I don't care what your grandma made. I don't care if your grandma did it that way because most everybody's grandmothers, considering it's now 2023, most of them learn to cook using cans and processed food. So we tell me about your great grandmother and your great, great grandmother's recipes, mm -hmm. because grandmother's not cutting it anymore. <laughs> they're part of, they're part of the processed food revolution. If, if, if your family member whose recipes you're trying to sell me on eating, um, as being healthy and family recipes, if they were born after 1900, they grew up on processed food. So we have to go back to the 1800s and older. And you can find those cookbooks. I've gone to the Historical Society in Santa Barbara. I've read the oldest cookbooks there. You know, they were making bone broth. They were having salads. You know, they were using red wine vinegar. You know, oftentimes these days people, you know, see vinegar as being bad for you 
all these little things that are bad for you now. Just go and look at really old cookbooks. See what they were eating. Um, you know, they, they had recipes in there for tamales, but you know, a big note, tamales are only for special occasions, holidays and special people coming into town. Um, you know, so, yeah, yeah. So, um, there's, you know, there's, there's foods for different times of season. There's foods for different times of life. Um, but traditional foods, you know, we don't need to recreate how to make eggs, you know, we need to look at how we've been preparing eggs properly all these years and learn how to do it that way because there's a reason why it was prepared that way. There's a reason why certain foods are prepared a certain way. There's a reason why there's so many recipes throughout the world where they cook rice for a really long time. They wash it, they soak it overnight, and then when they cook it, they cook it with even more water than the back of the bag tells you to do, and they cook it for longer periods of time. And there's something to that. There's a benefit there. And we need to try these really old recipes and see if we feel whole afterwards. You know, see how we feel afterwards. Let that be the test. That is so true and so easy to do. We think it's easy to do. Let's say it's easy to do. But for people who just have no time, you know, everyone's like running around with a chicken without a head. That's what our lives are like, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, if we could just get back to basics, you know, so instead of going to Chick-fil-A, you may not have time to cook that type of rice, let's say. But instead of going to Chick-fil-A for dinner, what can they do for a quick, good, wholesome meal? Everyone really needs to either meal prep or they need to sit down and write out what they want to have for dinner or lunch. And they need to make sure they stock their food appropriately. You, you're never going to win unless you make a plan. You have to set yourself up for success. And as a personal chef, this is what I do for my clients, but I have to do that for myself. And when I don't do that for myself, I'm left high and dry too. You know, now I don't have no food for dinner. Now I have no food for breakfast. Um, but if you take time to make sure you're stocked for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for these few days, you're going to take a lot off your plate later on when you're in a hurry. So it's making sure you've cooked some chicken breasts or you, you, you grilled extra steak and extra vegetables so you can just grab it, chop it up, put it over lettuce, drizzle your olive oil and vinegar, and now you have a salad. You have to, you have to make a plan. That's the best way to do it. I have to do it for myself too. I have to think, gosh, I'm going to the grocery store on Sunday because I'm a chef. I'm going to meal prep for my client. What am I going to get for myself? What am I going to have for dinner? What am I going to have for lunch? Okay, now I need to make sure that I make enough to work for the next day and the day after that. So I like to plan twice a week. So I do a Sunday inventory, and then I usually do a Wednesday, Thursday inventory. So twice a week I go, I choose, you know, I'm at the store almost every other day for my job, but twice a week I'm shopping for myself and taking inventory and taking an extra, you know, 30 to 40 minutes one of those nights to prepare some extra foods. So I think like, um, that is great advice. Thank you. Because everyone honestly needs to realize that we all have to plan. We have to plan our lives. We plan our social life. We plan our business calendar. And we forget, like we also have to plan our eating. Mm -hmm. And I think people forget that like, Oh, it's just magically supposed to show up somehow, or I have to figure this out magically. I don't know. So you're right. That's really good advice. Going back to when you say, when we're talking about time, mm -hmm. what I've realized in this matrix is that time expands or retracts. Like this concept of time is really kind of spooky because we actually can control time. Do you agree? Like, do you believe this? Do you see what I'm talking about? Yeah. Absolutely. I, I, I do. Um, I think we've all had experiences where we've done a meditation and time seems like 
it's expanded and the day is now longer than it was and you feel like you can fit more in. And then we've all had days where it seems like there was no time. Um, but I think we're in charge of it all. I think there is unlimited time. I, and I agree. So I think like, let's say, you know, if I'm like, oh God, I have no time to cook. I have no time to work out, let's say, right? In the end, if you're not going to cook and you're not going to work out, you actually spend more time feeling bad and frustrated that you didn't do that. Yes. And so then it on you all day. Yeah. Correct. So we have to get to a point where if we're feeling like, oh, I don't want to do that, we have to nip it in the bud right then and there and say, you know what? Later on, that's going to cost more time. So let me take care of it right now. Even though it could be painful, a short-term pain for a long-term gain. Yeah, Maybe. so it's, it's back to the concept of, of energy and everything being energy and where we place our thoughts is where we place our energy. So if we are thinking about an activity but we don't actually do it, we're spending all this time focused on that activity. If we're thinking about actions that we need to take and we don't do them, we've, we've wasted a lot of time just thinking about it. Yeah, so it's really truly in our control. Okay, so the lesson, we know that time, <laughs> it's all our fault and we have to figure it out and learn how to control it, right? It's, I mean, it's, it's all in our control. We just absolutely. have to remind ourselves every day. And, you know, it's okay to put up signs throughout your house with reminders, you know? You don't have to remember it all. You know, put up those those signs, those post-it notes throughout your house reminding you that you have plenty in time and you are in control of time. Oh, I love that. There's yeah, one, that's important. Yeah, there's one spiritual teacher. Her name is Maureen St. Germain. And she tells a great story about how she was late getting to the airport. She had her son drive her and how she manipulated time for them to get to the airport in time. And it's always using, you know, instead of, you cover the clock when you're in a hurry. You don't look at the clock. You cover it with a piece of paper. It doesn't exist anymore. And you keep using the mantra, I'm going to get to that destination on time and within time, on time and within time, on time and within time. And you'll notice, you know, the sea will part. You'll be able to navigate getting there quickly. Your nervous system will calm down. Um, you will control the time. That That is so true. That also, let me add to that. I love uh, Florence Scovel Shin. If Ooh. anyone is familiar with her, she was a metaphysical teacher from the 1920s. And she wrote a book. She wrote five, several books, but one book in particular is called The Game of Life and How to Play. And this is in the 1920s. Yeah. But she um, uses a lot of analogies from the Bible Mm -hmm. And she also talks about the splitting of the Red Sea and, you know, anyway, but she says the other important thing to do rather than know that you're in the game, right? And you know that you're in control, you ask for it to happen if it's in your highest good and the highest good for all. Because sometimes we can ask for things like, let's say I want to buy that house across the street because it has a beautiful view. And I'm like, oh, God, I wish I had that house. I wish I had. He, she actually used this as an example. I wish I had that house. Well, sure enough, uh, the lady who owned the house, she ended up dying. And so that house became available, right? And so that woman was allowed to buy it. But somebody had to die for that to become available. Okay. So there's different ways you can look at it. Like, well, no. that's why I'm, you know, <laughs> we're, we're on the same page. So I, at the Joe Dispenza retreat, we meditate six to eight hours a day. You don't even realize it at all. It's like you meditate and there's a lecture, you meditate, there's a lecture, you meditate, there's a lecture. And next, next thing you know, you add up the hours and you've been meditating for eight hours. It's, oh it's wild. But one thing he always drops into the meditations is that this be done in the best way possible for me. So he's always adding in, if you listen to any of the meditations, to you, for you as the player, 
to remind the universe, to remind the matrix that you need everything done in the best way possible for you. Because that's exactly it. You know, you may place your order for what you want, but if you're not descriptive enough, it might not actually come the way that's right for you. So I just met with a friend from high school who was in town. She lives in New Jersey and, you know, we've never really had spiritual conversations and somehow it became a huge spiritual conversation. And she's like, yeah, I just manifested our house and where we live in New Jersey. I love it. Everything's perfect. It came out exactly as I manifested, except I forgot to ask for a fence and I have no <laughs> fence between my neighbors and I, she's like, I totally forgot to ask for a fence. And I mean, isn't that funny that, well, luckily she could change that, but some things you can't change. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So there's all those little caveats you need to add in. And, but the best thing I've always heard is just be as specific and selfish as possible when you think about those things that you want to create and attract and manifest, be selfish, be specific, call it all out. And I think when you, when you say selfish, I mean, I think it's like m more this honest. Be honest with yourself. And, and, and like, okay, what is truly going to make you happy? Yeah, because it's right. And, and, right? So it's more like if you're happy, then the, uh, uh, the world's happy. Mm -hmm. You know, if every single person in this world is a complete whole being, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have any of the problems that we have. Yes. Everyone is a half version of themselves trying to figure it all out. Nobody's whole. And, and nobody is really happy truly with them because they haven't come back to really who they are. So I think that the other part of that, like, is the game of life is to come back to who we are so that we can all finally experience not only our true authentic selves, but each other in the most wholesome way. And that's the point of life. Like we yeah. just forget, like Whitney, I'm experiencing you right now. I'm enjoying you. And isn't that the point of life? Isn't that the point to have friends? Yeah, to be present in the moment. And isn't it so much more fun when you're present in the moment and you're fully comfortable in your skin? So we can all think about moments where we weren't able to fully experience life because something that we made up in our head was holding us back. So when we feel whole and fully accept ourselves, we can have conversations with each other and listen and experience and learn and grow and then take action to support that. Well, I remember um, before this podcast, you and I were talking and you were talking about, you know, kind of like the Whitney a few years ago, how you weren't really living your authentic life. Like you were frustrated and I, can you at, like talk about that right now? Because that's really important. Like what, what were you doing? Like when you first started your company or right before mm -hmm. when you thought you had to do it a certain way, elaborate on that. Oh yeah. I think there's definitely times in my life where we create limiting beliefs microphone wanted to remind me of that. Hey, Apparently I'm making least, more of my limiting beliefs. At least I didn't do that as a host, right? Yeah. So <laughs> there's definitely times in my life and there have been in my career where I think I have to do this step to get to this step, to get to this step, to get to this step. And I consider that now in reflection, a limiting belief. And so I knew I wanted to create Starseed Kitchen Organic Spices. I knew I wanted to create a product. I knew I wanted to put it out there into the world. Felt like I had to go to culinary school first. And then I created another law. Oh, well, I have to have worked as a chef first. Oh, well, I have to have worked as a chef for another year and another year and another year. And I kept making all these rules as to the reason why I couldn't launch and step into the career I wanted into the life that I wanted. And they were just limiting beliefs that were holding me back from, from doing it, from living it. Um, and I think more are revealed to me, you know, every, 
every few days or every few weeks. Others that I've unconsciously created that are stopping me from showing up as the version of myself that I feel on the inside that people might not be recognizing on the outside and that I get to merge those two. Um, Because we just get into habits. You know, I think for a lot of us, I know for myself, working from home or working in in a chef outfit in a kitchen causes me to be a certain way and it's hard for me to get out of that, you know. It's hard for people who work from home to get out of their pajamas. Mm -hmm. It's hard for people who wear a uniform to switch out of that uniform. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we all get comfortable in certain caricatures of ourselves. And then we use excuses within that character to stay there. And you have to just actively, mentally, and physically move yourself out of it. No one's going to do it for you. And no circumstance around you is going to do it for you. You actually have to physically do it yourself. And the easiest way to do it is if you can set yourself up in your mind and then take action. I think also, I mean, I loved what you said. It's so true. I think also it's who you surround yourself Mm, with as well. Huge. Right? Huge. So that's, and that's what I've oddly enough been thinking about quite frequently is, is the frequency of the other people around you, the frequency of the space that you're living in. So I know I want to create a new reality of my life. And that starts with my personality. Like my personality creates my personal reality. And so if I want my reality to change, I have to change my personality. But I also have to be able to envision that reality that I want to be walking and playing in every day. So what I did prior to going to a meditation retreat was f- to go and visit a place who, where I liked the reality. I wanted to go and experience a new place in 3D that was beautiful and luxurious and elegant and at a higher frequency. And then I could take that vision, that feeling into the meditation conference and be it in my mind for hours a day. So I chose to go to Palm Beach, Florida prior to the conference because I wanted to get a new energy in my field. I felt the energy around me where I'm living was heavy and dense and slow and difficult and hard. So I went to a place where my assumption was lighter, ease, flow, grace, beauty. That's what I ended up experiencing there. So I was able to take that into a meditation retreat, which made me realize I need to create that everywhere I am. I am in charge and I can create that wherever I am. So if you're experiencing feeling scattered and having 50 million places to go and not having time to make yourself healthy meals, not having time to go to the grocery store, nourishing yourself, you got to change your reality. You have to make changes in your day-to-day schedule. And it's really hard at first. Um, But your schedule and the environment isn't going to change to support you and make it easier. You have to make the changes. Mm -hmm. And then once you do later, it becomes easier. Mm -hmm. Like you were saying Mm -hmm. that Joe Dispenza talks about where you can attract things faster. I need to go. Can we go together next time? (laughs) Any time, anytime. It's just like, it's just like with food and trying a new recipe. The first time you make a new recipe, First time that you have to follow the recipe, you're constantly checking to make sure you're doing it right. You know, you sit down and eat it and you're constantly thinking, did I do it right? The first time's always the slowest. The next time you make it, it's a little easier. You move faster. By the third time you make it, you're moving a lot faster. And now you've been able to tweak it for how it works with your kitchen equipment, your pots and pans, the flavor profiles you like. And again, the more you make that recipe, the easier and faster you make it. And the more it will have become really defined to how you like it. And Mm -hmm. I think that analogy works with everything in your life. You know, same with workouts. The first time you try a new workout, a new yoga class, a new Pilates class, a new hike, it's uncomfortable and it's hard. 
and it feels weird. And then you do it again and you do it again. And then ultimately you hit a flow and you're like, this is my thing. This feels so good. Um, so I think we can find that analogy with everything and then start to get excited when it feels uncomfortable because we know we're doing something new and how exciting is that? So true. Cause that's how I feel with this whole podcast. I feel you know, super uncomfortable as far as like, oh, does the world really need another podcast? Oh, yeah. she's starting a podcast. Oh my God. But it's like, well, you and I have these conversations that are so mind blowing, you know, not being on in front of a screen. And I have these types of conversations with people that are in my life and that I meet. And we're everyday people. You know, uh, it's not like I'm speaking to Tony Robbins right now. It's like, this is my friend Whitney, who is also trying to figure out how to work this game, mm -hmm. how to be, fulfill our dreams, your dreams, how to make it and be happy and love yourself, mm -hmm. how to love Whitney again. Mm -hmm. You know, like, why can't we have it all is my question, right? And, yes. and going... Like, I remember you also said, like, you thought you want, you had to be like the mean chef or kind of like the, not the mean chef, but like the, not the poor <laughs> chef, the struggling <laughs> chef. Like, you know, it's really funny when I was in Florida, when I was in Palm Beach, I met up with a friend of mine that I met in culinary school and she grew up in a very affluent family and she went to culinary school not because she needed a job or she needed the skill she just wanted the skill you know she was a full-time colon hydrotherapist she had multiple locations her husband's very successful she was going to culinary school just to like learn more about how to be a better health supportive cook for herself and then she could provide her colon hydrotherapy clients with more recipes, more health supportive recipes, better understand how to combine flavor profiles to better support them. And when we were chatting, she reminded me how when we were in culinary school, they started telling us and preparing us that we were going to have to be poor and broke and struggle <laughs> and it was going to be physically hard. And, you know, they were, you know, preparing us to be in a low vibration, you know, reality. And for both her and I, we were like, it, it shocked us and shook us because that's not why we went there. You know, we, we weren't going to school to be poor. And we never saw that this career path would make us poor and keep us poor. Um, she had that experience and was able to shook it up, shake it off. I had that experience and, and it put the thought in my head that I had never thought of before. Then followed up by a few different people in my life coming up to me saying, gosh, you know, that's pretty brave of you to leave your corporate job and go to culinary school and make a decision to make minimum wage the rest of your life. And like I heard that over and over again and it, it stuck. And I then played that character for years, that, oh, sad, struggling, overworked, you know, chef. And it changed how I looked. It changed how I felt. It changed my confidence in, in being able to do other things. And I looked in the mirror one day, I didn't even recognize myself. I had gained 30 pounds. You know, I was never getting dressed anymore. I wasn't me. And I thought, what the hell happened? Um, and then I realized, wow, I allowed other people's projections in, you know, I allowed them to stay on me, stick on me, go inward. Um, but that's not me and that's not my belief system. So mm -hmm. you then have to work on shaking it off, clearing your energy field, field, realizing you need to start protecting that energy field and you control what you allow in. Now I don't allow people around me that talk to me that way, you know, yeah. now I realize, you know, I don't have to be that type of chef. You know, I surrounded myself with other people that, um, that communicated to me that they want to work with a chef who is successful, who is beautiful, who is health supportive, who is, you know, the idealized person that they would want to have, you know, in their kitchen, preparing their meals. Um, but I don't have to be that character forever. I can be any version of that character. Mm -hmm. uh, 
But it, I mean, it happens to all of us at different times. Like one sure. comment can really stick, but it's oh. up to us to shake it off. And when you realize it's stuck there, you know, find a friend and be like, I don't know why I'm thinking this way. Like, like help me shake it off. Cause you don't have to do it alone. That's, a, that's true. That's why, you know, I've learned, I mean, we all have had those people, right? The negative Nancy's, but at this point in my life, um, it's like negative negativity. One person says one negative thing. I, I'm done. I can't. I only want to be surrounded by loving, supportive, inspiring people. Like that's it. And we're in control of that. I think people would save so much money on therapy and, um, <laughs> you know, antidepressants or if they just filtered who they had around them. Yeah. That's a simple step. Huge, and I've watched when I focus who I hang around, I take off. My businesses do better that week. I do better that week. Um, when I really filter who I'm around, it's it's that next level life. I love that. Oh my gosh, Whitney, that's really inspiring. What are the projects that you are working on that you can share that are coming up? Yeah. So we always have new episodes of the High Vibration Living Podcast every Tuesday. Um, I have a beautiful lineup for the rest of the year. I will be the guest chef at the Ecology Center in San Juan Capistrano on November 3rd, doing a really beautiful true farm to table five to six course meal. And something that's really neat that I'm adding to that is I'll be making an ebook with all the recipes from that Ecology Center dinner. So that way, everybody that enjoys that meal can be empowered to go home and recreate it with their friends and family to do, you know, farm to dinner tables or just any sort of dinner gathering with the people that are around them. <clears throat> and then anyone that can't attend um, can have these recipes to make as well. Okay, so that, what is the date on that? Did you say the date? Sorry. Oh, yeah. Um, Friday, November 3rd is the Ecology Center dinner. And then the ebook will be ready um, that weekend. We're going to have photos to accompany it, lots of videos. You know, my passion is just inviting people to get back into their kitchens. You know, the healthiest meal you can ever make is the one that you make yourself. Because of what we talked about, your, your energy goes into that food. And so... Mm -hmm. I really want to empower more people to cook healthy, delicious meals themselves. And so this month I will also be launching Starseed Kitchen refill bags. So that way people can buy our Starseed Kitchen spices at a more cost effective price. They'll be in a bag as well as the glass jar. So you can buy the jar once and then just buy the refill bags over and over again. Um, so you can get more spice in your life that's healthy and organic mm -hmm. and flavorful. The and spice is so good, you guys. Thank you. And yeah. I believe, you know, I believe that's it for now. And we can find you on, um, what's your website again, babe? Starseedkitchen.com. So oh. you can find everything on Starseed Kitchen. I really share most of my announcements in my email newsletters once a month. Okay. And um, and then if you are listening and you're in the Los Angeles era, area, Starseed Kitchen is now in Arowan Market, which is Woo. very exciting. From Pasadena to Calabasas to Venice Beach, oh. we are in all 10 locations. Um, it's that a dream come true. Yeah. That is an, congratulations. That's a huge accomplishment. And Thank that you. goes to show, because I remember when I met you, you were you know, kind of down and out, you're trying to pursue your dreams and this is happening. Yeah. We were even talking, you were even explaining to me the label that you were going to use and all sorts of stuff. So this goes to show to anyone out there who is struggling to fulfill their dreams, it's going to happen. Absolutely. Just wait. Be persistent. You know, I be persistent, work every day and you know, the only thing I would do differently is to meditate more and stay more positive and to always make time to work on yourself because the better shape you're in, the better mindset you're in, the faster you can attract all your dreams to happen. If you let yourself go 
in order to try to get to your destination, it's going to take a lot longer. Remember what we talked about here, matter is the slowest form of energy. So if you keep trying to do things the old fashioned way, one step in front of the other, it's going to take a lot longer to get to your destination. Just always, always, you know, do the work, but always work on yourself as well. Okay, babe, that's wonderful advice. Well, thank you so much for being my first guest. I'm honored. Yay. I love you. I love you. Okay, we'll Go see Carla. you in November. Sounds good. I, I look forward to it. Okay, bye, babe. Have a beautiful day. Bye.